All right. Welcome in. It is week nine chalk talk. Let me know. I just need some people to confirm you can hear me and we'll get started. So, you know, 20 minutes of offense tape, not as much defense, actually going to be a lot of offense because there was, there wasn't a ton of defense really played in this one. They only played a, they didn't play quite as many snaps as you would imagine. So not as many to break down on that side. Otherwise, a lot to talk about offensively, which we're going to try to go through relatively, relatively quickly. So, okay. Um, let's dive in. We'll do the play first and then we'll talk about it. Got the pen, all the usual tools. First play of the game. A little motion. Flat tight end motion. Browns tried to run it a lot. They were pretty generic in this one overall. Didn't think they were very exotic, obviously, knowing that they wanted to hold some stuff for the next two weeks. We'll see if they start to break tendency a little bit more. This is just wide zone from pistol, motioning to it. Pretty good job by the front side here. Dewan Jones and Teller, you know, working here to climb. The backside double team, Posich, you want to get to this backer. Good cut off of the, off of the wash, right? It's called the bang course right up inside. Not bounce, not bend. Six-yard gains are a fun thing. Browns went to a lot of this Wildcat stuff. Some more exotic looks than others. This one just an example of what can go wrong if we don't finish a block. This is not the best. Uh, really, actually, some some pretty poor Dewan Jones blocking tape here. I don't know if the shoulder's bothering him, but... You watch 79 here on the block down. So he's blocking down on this four eye technique. That's the alignment. Okay. You'll see him kind of get the chip help from Njoku, but then doesn't finish the block. I don't know if that, again, I don't know if that shoulder's bothering him. Um, now, again, you could see the cut here that Ford could make. You would imagine a guy wearing number 24 can make that cut a little quicker. But that's certainly not what Dewan is blocking here. This is power. So, you know, you have Batonio pulling for the front side inside linebacker, who's number 10 here. Meant to go in that hole you see right here, right, is the natural path. Now, if you get this alignment with the back, these guys come up the backside, you can kind of jump cut and squeeze it and make your way through here, right? Um but nonetheless, not, not great from Dewan from a teach tape perspective, allowing 92 to slip off, and that's who makes the play. Third and three now, same drive. A little motion out. This is a little exotic running back motion they're trying to do this week to unfold who's covering him, I think. This is a popular blitz front, so this is uh, something we'll talk about as we go through this. The sim pressure stuff is not anything abnormal. The Browns see it all the time, um, trying to sort of hide who they're going to be bringing here. You know, they're walking down seven into the box. They bring all seven. You better have some answers. The Browns are going to run a pretty popular concept for them. Mesh, right? They run this, this quite often. They run mesh here with usually a rail route is what's paired with it, and then they'll sit. Usually you'll have a sit-down player in case both of those, uh, you know, both of those uh, you know, curl flat or sorry, middle hook defenders chase the flat route or the uh, drag routes. Sorry, I'm not I'm not thinking well today. This one they actually don't go with a middle sit, so you'll see that they actually run an out route and a corner route, but it's covered pretty well. The immediate answer would be David, right? We'll see as pressure arrives, sort of Betonio. Dewan, or sorry, Deshaun needs to step up a little bit, deliver that. This ends up being a fine outcome, dropping it to the running back. But you'll see from the tight view, you know, you can make this pretty easy on yourself. If you know you have mesh, you're just kind of reading that mesh in the middle, right? So you'll see him kind of walk through, check protection, probably be making either a Rico, Roger. There's a, a bunch of calls you can slide right. So if they were to slide right, you're here, 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 right? If they're bringing six, you know, if this were to if this player were to come here, he'd probably be the free guy. That's the quarterback responsibility. You'll see that the tackles are taught to take the nearest inside threat. Now the Cardinals don't bring everybody; they bail out, right? They punch three guys out. So you want to slide right and step up, but this is where it's hard, right? I can't really blame him for not throwing this to David because when it gets past the mesh point, 
it's hard to get this throw out because you obviously have this congestion right here. Right? So it ends up being a good result. Checking it down to your back. Who goes out in the flat late? Turns into an 18-yard gain. All right, first down, I think. Watch this one through. All right, so this is, uh, again, so I just talked about the mesh stuff that they like to run, right? So, you know, again, here, here with a middle sit. This Chip Kelly mesh is what people tend to call that. So you'll get a rail route from the back. This is a little more indicative of the true look of this stuff. You get a vertical go here. So the Browns do a tendency breaker actually on this one. So they say we're, you know, teams are scouting us. They know we're going inside on these drags. They actually run those pivot routes. You still get the middle sit and you still get this look here, but they're pivoting out. So if guys were to jump inside, they could work back to the sideline and be open. Right. That's a that's a that's a good answer to a tendency that you have. You'll watch them pivot. Looks like David's actually, I'm sorry, guys, I drew that up wrong. It's David that's the mesh guy, so he's going to pivot and go back. Uh, I think this is more here, pivot, and then you're going to have Tillman be your middle settle, right? So this one gets a little congested. You can see it's, if you if you want to be picky here, where, where you'd want to go with this as you set up, right? They have everything congested, but they actually end up sending this backside corner is reading Tillman. The rail route from the running back ends up being the route to throw if you can get to it. But again, that's a big if you can get to it scenario. So you'll see you get the moment of choice here. Like at this moment, I know that I have safety turn in the middle of the field, chasing the backside settle. That leaves Ford one on one with a linebacker out here running. You know, this is a route teams are hitting on the Browns quite often is that back out of the backfield on the rail route up the sideline, and you got a chance. And I don't think the protection's bad. You know, you can reset here in the pocket. You don't have to press forward and try to leave the way Watson does. If you sit in, you got a chance. He's quick to get out of that one. Again, getting back, knocking the rust off, all that stuff. You get a hold call on Jed, though, so it pushes it to first and 20 now. You go empty. So I think this is just Haas wide juke. So it's – let me make sure I'm, I'm telling you guys right here. Um, two hitch routes, uh, verticals with a couple inside. It's a variation. So you have a couple stick routes, sit in coverage, outside release, mandatory outside release is usually how that's taught, lifting coverage off. You have sit, zone sitters here, and then you have the tight end who can sort of make a middle read. He can break off of it this direction. He can break off of it if he sees – leverage back out the other direction he actually breaks out back toward the field which is the wide side the left side you'll see david here he's open these are throws we have to complete this one's dropped by david you know there was a mixture of some stuff going on where watson wasn't you know completing these and i think he was taking a lot of the blame and i actually don't think a lot of the blame should have been on him early right that ball is in his stomach that's got to be caught so that's a drop. There's several drops in this one. Second and 20 now. Hey, Mason, thanks for stopping by. Ricardo, guys, appreciate you being here, man. Love doing these for you guys. Now we're in second and 23 by one. You're going to get a variation of verticals. Check it down to the back, which I'm fine with. Right? Middle, middle is dropping. Ball out. You're trying to kind of read the bender. He's trying to read this bender from the high-low of this backer with the single high if he can put it in this general direction but the safety does a good job jumping down on it taking that away this is the route right this is the answer we just got to get to it quicker like the ball should be out now and he's running lateral trying to find him if this ball's out now you got a lot of space to play with here right late and and this one is an inaccurate throw i don't put this one on kareem you'll see from the from the tight view here like this ball should be you know, again, if you're reading the middle and you're trying to feel out if David is going to be like, you know, at this point he's kind of bottled up and you have a, a, a backside linebacker dropping underneath it, right? So the will's dropping underneath it too. Just get this ball out right there. 
a little late and you're on the run trying to throw with a little bit of a weak shoulder and it's inaccurate. So just get that one out. Thanks, Todd. Appreciate that, man. Third and 20 Browns are kind of run like a, a little bit of a delayed screen here. This is something more popular at the college level against off coverage, third and 20 type coverage, right? Where you're taking uh, the, the tight end or whoever, the boundary receiver on a little shallow, throw it to him, and then you're just setting up a wall here, right? And trying to catch it, run under it, and see if you can create a way to get to the first. They almost do here. I like this call on third and 20s because throwing downfield is – sometimes impossible right so great run from david i mean you get it from third and 20 to fourth and four you at least have a chance so they end up punting second and seven next drive out right motion to two by two right, this is just counter kick out good block good run lane let's watch it from the tight view so you're going to see joel batonio right here kick out uh, 97 here, backside edge. Boom. Good wall down by Teller. Good good angle here from DeWand. He's there. Just make yourself wide, right? That's exactly what we want, a good cut. And that's a nine-yard nine run, right? So next, a uh, couple plays later, third and five now. Motion into quads. So when I say quads, you're right. You're talking one, two, three, four to a side. So four strong. I don't really like what they're doing here. These these are. I get the premise, right? So if you watch it through, they're going to try to run the outside on an arrow. Um, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to say. I don't like it as much as I think it's just sort of covered well like the cardinals really covered these pretty well so you're going to get a you know stem corner and then you're going to get coop running trying to sell an in breaker and drive back to the side it's a flood variation right uh a flood means you're flooding one side of the field so that's why you'll hear different things called flood concepts right so you know i think the concept is fine sitting on this pivot route Never really get back outside very well at the top of this one, and then they're sitting outside. I mean, the reason that he's able to sit on Cooper's outside shoulder is because he has on the backside. Buddha Baker is sitting here ready to to bracket Cooper, so there's no answer. Watson dumps it off last second, but that's just well covered, well covered by the Cardinals on third down. Here's your tight view at it, talking protection. This is why you don't leave tight ends all the time, one-on-one -on -one and pass pro. Just, you know, David's one of the better ones at it, but not quite good enough. Fourth and three. So you're going to get a, um, you know, a little stack alignment right here. Okay. So this is an area you want to try to take advantage of defensive confusion. Cardinals do bring a blitz right into it, right? So the Cardinals bring one and two into it. You want to be able to hit this window right here because you're going to get a down corner. So you're going to get, you know, you're definitely going to want to, like the, uh, if I were to guess, you're going to get a corner out with a smash variation off of it into the flat. All right, this just needs to be completed. It's tight. You're going to get hit but it definitely needs to be completed. Right? So the ball is just too low. I mean, it's too low. It's so – it's hard. It's really hard. I mean, he's going to take a hit, but I mean, if I were grading this, it's a quarterback low throw. You can put it on his back shoulder here to shield him a little bit, but it's got to be higher. I mean, that's just – it's tough to ask six, six four guys to go down and pick it up off the ground like that. So – you don't score there. Now, first and 10 on the 28. I think that uh, this is the very next possession out, very first set of plays after that. This is a big hit. This is a good job. A right, big play down the left side. I think this is the moment everybody decided, like, oh, okay, he can still make some of those downfield throws, right? I want to walk through real quick what the 
route concepts are. They're trying to sell. What are we trying to do? We're trying to sell jet here, right? Off of it, we're going to run, right? Called a called an angle route, as some people call it that, from a wide outside. Some people call it banana route. And you're going to get a sale underneath of it. To, again, what are you doing? Trying to get one, two, three routes to a side. And it's going to be a flood concept, okay? Off of this, get some motion by Kareem out of the backfield, the opposite direction. So that holds this backside a little bit. And then you're just reading the corner, right? Who's the corner playing, 85 or two? He thinks the safety is going to pick it up. He doesn't pick it up. And that's the result. Tight view is good. It's a good look at it. Good read. You can feel the cornerback squatting at that point. This is the moment of decision. Sinks the hips. Right on. Right. I think this I, – I don't think, Mason, I don't think this is off time. I think once you – you have to read the corner's hips. He's got to slide away from – this pressure right here to really gather up, gather, gather, right? And at this point, you can see the corners committed. I think there's plenty of time there to get that out. I think it's fine. Craig, thanks, man. Uh, her idea for that, I, I will uh, I will tell her you said that. Appreciate that, man. Uh, I don't know if it's Craig. I'm sorry. C.A. Leg? I don't know. Sorry about screwing up. I'm not good at names, but thank you for saying that. She, she <laughs> She's very into it. Um, okay. This is the next, so they run on first down and now we're in second down, I think second and seven. And again, these two man route concepts they're trying to hit here. So I understand what they're doing, right? They're trying to sell off of this play action, trying to sell an over route, trying to sell an exchange here. They're going to try to pivot back off of it and go back to the pylon. It's got to hit. If it doesn't hit, if it doesn't break open, you know, when you're doing max protection, which is what we're doing here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys in protection, you got to be able to hit these routes. And if he's not open, covered up really well. It's tough to uh, tough to complete those. All right, what we would like to do, if we can, if we're talking about coaching points here, we never want to take a sack. So as you feel this is covered, just throw this thing into the back of the end zone. Throw it over his head. And don't take a hit if you can. I'm not saying Watson's at fault here because I don't think Nick does a very good job in protection. But, you know, like right here, you know, just chuck that thing over the top. You know where your routes are, right? So this is what you'd like to do. But rid the fight another day. All right, so they end up taking a field goal on that one. Second quarter now from Pistol. Little toss, just an example of like why runs go for three or four sometimes. Watch Amari. Amari's got to hit this crack, and it's not easy. Wide receivers don't like doing this, man. He's got to hit this right here and stay on. If he stays on this spot right here, it's got a chance to go, right? He's got a real chance to maybe pop up the sideline for 15 yards or so. I don't have an answer on Pierre Strong, Jerry. I really, or uh, I don't know if that was Jerry who said that. Yeah. I don't think any of the running backs are impressing them to the point that they want to give uh, somebody carries more than someone else. But, you know, it's weird having the really good balance I thought they had in Seattle and then just kind of taking, you know, taking completely Pierre Strong out of only three carries. But you can see if Amari just gets that block, you know, 20 sort of over pursues right there. That one's out the gate a little bit more. So second and six now. Inside zone. See from the tight view. Got to account. Well, this is tricky though, because 34 is a is a pre-snap safety, right? And and as you're doing zone stuff, inside zone, tight zone, it, it's not. You don't often account for safeties late into the box right here. So I'll just say that, right? Like, ideally, you would like to maybe have Joel block him, but to see that that late 34 creeping down tough, 
loads up the play. The Cardinals, you know, I mean, I thought defensively their offense was a disaster, but I thought defensively they played really hard. So give them credit there. This is one I'd like to see them the, the 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 quarterback get to third and five. So I want to play it through for you. Browns did a quick snap, which I love doing those. All right. What I mean by quick snap, it's almost like a touch. You see how the Cardinals aren't prepared for it? Like the ball's already been snapped. He's late to the line. I've written on this and posted tweets on it. But like the center, you can't see it because the film only starts at a certain point. But the center's the last one to the line of scrimmage, and he just touches the ball and snaps it. Watch how the football's already in Watson's hands, and like one or two people have barely started to move over here. So it creates better protection. So off of this look, you're going to get that C route or banana route, whatever you, you know, clown. Some people call it a clown route. It's a whole bunch of different names for that route. And then you're going to get uh, a deep over that runs underneath it. And this is the over I would like to get to. You get a shallow here as well. Again, what are we doing? Creating one, two, three on a flood concept. Uh, the, the, the route you want to get to here, though, is Amari. I think that Deshaun needs to step up and kind of up into this void and deliver it because Cooper's pretty open right here, as you can see. And definitely, <laughs> definitely do not take this hit. So you'll see it here from the tight. Got to kind of step up as best you can. It's not easy. I'm not asking, you know, this isn't bluntly obvious, but you got to try to step forward, work forward in the pocket, but because you, you got an answer here. But the last thing to do when you're a guy coming off of a rotator cuff injury is take this hit. Like running into the middle of the hash marks where these gigantic 300 pound men are trying to rip your head off. That's this. That's an almost identical hit to what he took against Tennessee. That's a bad hit. That's a really, really tough hit. Can't you can't do that? You, you just and even you know his teammates are saying you got to slide, man. He's got to get down. Would I rather have Watson the rest of the year or try to pick up a random first down against the Cardinals? Probably say the rest of the year. Gunplay action, really a three-man route. Guess what the route concept is? It's flood, right? It's flood, so they're going to try to release David late to the flat. They're going to try to go over the top with a corner route, right, right here, and then they're going to run a backside drag, right, off of play action sell this this is real this is really run action because you're selling this run concept here but it's pretty well covered but again you know if you're able to get out and use a quarterback's legs for seven or eight seven or eight yards you feel pretty good about that right even if the play action is designed you want to throw it cardinals covered it up pretty well but again those are easy cheap yards five six seven yards Really like this wrinkle out of Wildcat. You'll see it from the tight view, what it's doing, this high motion where it's – watch the impact this high motion faking the reverse has on 7 and 34 here. See him go? What does that open up? Look at the lanes it opens up. Great block by Teller. Burying his man. Wasn't sure if he'd get called for holding. Got a little nervous. Here's again the look, same view, or same play, different view. Look at the 7, 34, and 18, all honoring the reverse. Opens up good front side running lanes. Good stuff. Again, good first down run. Right, Just uh you know, tight zone with split action, motion to the split. I would like to know who our boy Tillman's coming in here to block. Should be 34 who ends up making the play. He decides, hey, I'm just going to run by him and go to this way backside and not even touch that backside. So you, so you might be asking yourself, like, why has Cedric Tillman not been on the field? Why can't he play? What's what's going on in these early portions of the year? Well, he's not blocking anyone. He doesn't block him and, and even just standing there. He doesn't block Buda Baker. Like, he's got to block. Didn't, didn't get asked to do a ton of that in Tennessee. He's got a block. All right, so this is the deflection. It's not an interception. It is a, it is a touchdown. I mean, I'm not sure you could throw this ball a million times and it would, it would have this result. So 
let's let's kind of walk through what they're doing here. So it's actually a pretty generic route concept. Uh, what you have going on on this side over here is two stick routes for leverage. If you want to go left side with an outside release takeoff, and then you just have a backside. Eh, that's not the right way to draw that up. A backside slant right here. And then I think you probably, I didn't see if the back released or not, but you probably have a flat tied to it. Very generic, right? I think the thing that Watson does is he doesn't realize, he thinks this is going to be a safety who sits on the hash because this safety is rolling down. Actually, you know, as the game goes on, it was, it was pretty, um, it was, it was pretty obvious that they were going to, anytime it was three by one. So what I mean here, three by one, so you have three over here by one over here, you're going to have the Cardinals were saying, we're not going to let Amari beat us. So they roll to it and kind of play man on the front side here, try to bracket, taking it away. This was a common theme. Like he thinks the safety sitting, he's not, even if this ball is caught, which it probably, as it hits the helmet, it probably is caught like right here. It's a, it's going to be a really bad hit on Cooper. Like he's going to get laid out. How it works out to hit the helmet and, and end up going into the perfect part of the end zone where Cooper almost doesn't even have to break stride is an amazing physics achievement. Like, look at that. That's kind of crazy. It's really crazy how that works out. I, I mean, I really can't believe it either. It's it's pretty wild how that ends up being a touchdown. I still I don't think it's an interception, but it would have been a really hard hit on Cooper. So um yeah, ball bounces off a helmet the right direction this week after what we saw last week. Next possession out, right? Well, under center, heavy personnel, wide zone. And again, this is on, you know, I'm trying to just, Cooper is a phenomenal, I don't care so much. I mean, Cooper's out there to catch touchdown passes and stuff. So it's not like a big deal to me here but he's got to make this block on, on wide zone. If not, nobody's blocking 21. We can't get to him because you're going to have all this flow. So you're going to have here, 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 and there's nobody for him. Now, I don't mind if you say, well, that's not blocking 20. Making cornerbacks tackle in space is not such a big deal to me. Like, I don't mind that. But you can't just run inside and not touch this player and you have a dead run play. So... You know, I'm complaining about Amari Cooper's blocking. That's not what he's paid for, but he, he's got to be a little bit better. I don't know what happens with Watson's feet here, man. I, I think like one, two, that I don't really, <laughs> I don't really see anything slip per se. I mean, I think maybe the right foot slips a little. Or he like he overextends with the left foot because if you're if you're pointing it where you want to throw it, like the left foot should be here, and it's <laughs> the the hip is pointing opposite. So I I mean I don't know I ha I have to hope that he slipped. Because that is really awkward. We'll watch it from this tight view. Try to get you know Z Zapruder this whole thing. Um, I think there's a slight slip. I think the right foot kind of moves. I don't know. I don't know. It's really weird. It does not look normal. Yeah, I, I think that I'm I'm counting on there being some slippage on that one. I mean, that was, that's just a really awkward looking outcome. Like right, like right here, the right foot. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Strange. Third and 10, 347 left. So this is a different way to get to flood. So they're quads into this. They go motion to the corner route. You're going to get late to the flat. Um, I, th I think, let me make sure Marquise is going on the corner here. No, he's on the verge. So, okay, it's just an extra body in the middle of taking out coverage. So they're going to motion, run him on a post to clear out. You're going to put Cooper on the corner route. You're going to have a sail route from two, 
and then a flat route right here. Again, you're trying to create the one, two, three flood stuff, but the Cardinals were having really none of it. They were covering it really well. Kind of sitting on everything. You could you could potentially try to drive, but at this point, Dewan has already been beat, bull rushed into his lap. Um, kind of tough. You do have some late throws you can make here up the sideline or here, but again, you know, I don't I don't want Watson getting himself hurt. You'll see from the 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 uh, tight here. Not not Dewan's best game. He kind of eats this bull rush and doesn't do very well with it. And then the Cardinals are ready to pounce. Right, they're only bringing three. Thirty four is spying. So don't get a throw off. Not great. All right. So again, same period of time and same drive three by one. This is the look the Cardinals were given all game, right? So they would like to walk Baker down in here and then have him bracket an outside inside bracket here for Cooper. You see that double team? This is what they were talking about, what they went back to later. They did a good job here of taking away on the front side of the read, bracketing this over route, the back the check down. I mean, I'd like us to get back to the left side if you can because you have a check down answer here, but we stay on the front side and hang out, right? So uh, I think this one is a drop. We'll have to see from the tight. I don't think I don't even know if we got to the tight. I don't think we did. It's okay. All right, uh, empty three by two. You're going to go back to a flood variation. I mean, you're talking a lot of people coming to the left side of your screen. So let's draw it up. Actually, let's let it play through. Sorry, guys. You can see the result. I think Marquise Goodwin kind of quit on the play a little bit early. Right? So... Browns clearly thought they could hit some of these floods. They were calling a lot of them. So stem inside, the corner hit a sail, you know, check release flat, and then you had a backside drag from Cooper into the window. And at this point, again, you're talking about second down, second and 10. So, you know, reading the front side here, there's two options to me think you can put this ball on the sideline but again you're getting pressure so that you can't really read it quite as long as you want to read it this pressure from joel doesn't let him read he has to throw with some anticipation because if you if you have time to sit in and read it like a second and a half longer you have cooper right here you have your flat route you have your corner route i think these are open Right, so Joel loses his man. I mean, again, at the moment of like wanting to launch it, you start to feel that pressure. You maybe slide a little bit right here and create some space for yourself. Right, so got a chance to catch that though. But these are some plays they're leaving on the field. Third and nine now. Back motion again. All right, so we're back to quad strong. Going to go with the same throw. A chance to block it up when it's caught. But this ball is inaccurately thrown. So you see what they're wanting to do. But this one's left way back behind him. It's too, that's, that's just such a difficult catch. Got a chance, though, if you do catch it, to make something out of it. Now 115 before half. Right, we're just running stick routes again. Pretty simple, you know, route designs for this game. You know, Watson leaves this one to uh, to Aikens on the right side. I don't know if he thinks he's an outbreaking on this. Aikens is kind of reading it as a curl it up situation. Watson clearly either just misses it, which is what I'm led to believe. I mean, Hudson gets beat inside on the backside, so that doesn't help. But I don't see this one being completed either way thrown too far outside all 
All right, three by one. Again, you want to run some pin pull stuff. You can't you can't have a missed block on the front side tackle. So this is on Hudson. If you get a pin and pull, he's got to take care of this player here. He can't let him get beat back inside. That's always going to be the problem. You get 45 taken care of, you have a chance to be out the door here and have a nice run, but he is not taken care of, and that play is dead. So I think we're in a big third down situation here, third and nine, trying to get some points on the board before half. Talked about it earlier. Off the chip check down, can we get it to him? We do. Look at that. They're bailing in coverage. No need to force it downfield. Right? Just check it down to the chip route. Right? Let him make a play in space. You get an over pursuit. You get a 12 yard gain. Nicely done. Good job from Watson here. Working down, right? You get a variation of what's uh, four verticals. At least we're trying to. Aikens is has struggling kind of crossing the hash and getting back up vertical. But this is what you want. Dump it down to your running back. Pick up six yards, seven yards. But you got to catch it. All right? You got to catch these. So it's not like, uh, you know, these guys did a bunch of favors in the catch department as well here. All right, second half now. Some just not not a ton from the second half because it was a run fest, but there's a few plays I want to pinpoint. Again, this is the first play out. And again, just kind of want to point out Dewan. Again, I don't know if he's beat up or, or hurt, but 79 here on the front side. You got to take care of the front side edge, man. And he just lets him go by. So I don't I don't really know. It's really not a very well blocked run game from them collectively. Kind of concerned about that moving forward. Third and nine on that drive. Alrighty, three by one. You get mesh. I mean, I think we have two answers here. Uh, if you want to throw for first down. Either of these two drag routes have an opportunity if you put it on him to catch and run. He chooses to go middle, which is fine because, you know, Goodwin has him beat, but that's, uh, you know, it's not, it's not completed, right? So you can put this on who you want. It's not a bad read coming back middle because there's nobody there. I mean, it hits him in the hands. 21 makes a good play on the football when it arrives. Safety does a good job of collecting late to try to come back and battle it too. I'll give credit to the defense for making a nice, nice play on that ball. So I don't mind the throw. I don't mind chasing that one down the middle of the field. Another example of run play stuff where we're just confused. We've got two guys blocking one. This is just counter with a tight end or a wing pull. I know that this doesn't. <laughs> This is now like a fullback and not a not a blocking, not a not an offensive lineman now, Nick Harris, right? So we're gonna pull and try to to log two players. We have two on two here, guys. Can can they block both of them up and get out the front door? That should be the back door. But watch these two are blocking the same guy. Nobody gets on seven, and the play is dead. So just like little details in the run game, one player being all, and that's how it goes, right? It's how it goes, but they need to be better there. All right. Rewind this one. Off play action. Could take a shot down the sideline here. Tillman, right? He's got leverage. They're trying to get an over route with a backside dig, right? That little little bit of a form of dagger concept, right? We are trying to get that look, or if you can break it off, break it off. Don't mind coming back to your running back late for checkdowns, though. With all that space, man, those turn into good gains. 
you know, know where your answer is. If you don't want to throw this football because they're sitting on a lot of this stuff, which they are, Cardinals did a nice job. Checking that down is an okay result, man. Those late releases. You know, you can see here, the dig is something you could go to, but again, Jed is driven into his lap a little bit, and, and you at this point are a little uncomfortable, so you can't step up the way you need to in order to deliver this football. I just think the Browns have to be, they, they, they need to up front be better at forming pockets. I think they're not helping in that regard. Anyway, I think this is third down after the Miles Garrett fumble recovery off the Shelby Harris strip sack. And this is pretty easy. The Cardinals just send two guys, you know, chasing the flat from the running back. These two take off here, and it's just a very simple pitch and catch. Right? Makes things pretty easy. So I just wanted to show that one. Catch and throw. You know, Watson doing a little dance. I think that's the – uh Okoronkwo dance. Here's the uh, opposite end zone view of it. Drop it down, right? Touchdown. So there's only a few more plays on the way out of the door I want to show you. Third and three now, and I want to talk about tendency issues and why a play gets blown up, right? So, you know, the Browns are pretty clear for loving to run strength side, wide pin pull types, right? Where you're either pulling this guard or pulling this guard. They love to run pullers. Well, watch right here, 25, when he feels out what's coming. He just runs around it. You know, normally, guys, would be a little more gap sound. He just loops around it because you have a pretty good design up until the moment nobody's there for 25, and he makes you bounce. That's why you don't pick up a third and three. So they got to they gotta come up with like, at this point, something I'd like them to do is, you know, speed option this thing and pitch it, right? Pitch it outside. They have to find some some tendency beaters here, especially with the Ravens. I hope they have some wrinkles they put in for this week to beat some of the predictability. Would be nice. I uh, wanted to draw a highlight to this throw, really good throw off, off run, just play action from Watson. Again, you know, you've heard me say it 17 times today. It's just flood just a different way of getting to flood. This is a great throw from Watson, right? Off of the play action you're going to get here. Oh, maybe I should pause the video, right? So you're going to get clear out, number one, selling inside, driving back, deep sale, and then back off of the play action, release to the flat late, right? So this is a pretty good read, pretty good route, pretty good throw. One of the few times that they were able to catch the Cardinals on some of these. This is put into a pretty tight window. You'll see from the tight view. Yeah, I'll try to get to the sack stuff, man. Maybe maybe if we find some time. Uh, don't don't can't do it today. But I think I've noted pretty clearly that the pockets aren't as stable. Like this is a stable pocket. They're not having enough of these for Watson to throw from. That's a great throw, man. Like that, again, working off. Boom, set your feet. Drive that just out of reach. That's that's one of his – that's his second best throw of the day. Third and 11 now coming late in the third quarter. Here's that pressure again, right? So it's, th it's three by one. So are they going to take Baker? and Is he going to pop out of here? Are they going to bracket? Well, this isn't Cooper, so they're probably not going to bracket it, right? Watch what happens. They bring him. Everything's covered up, right? They're dropping this cover two, so they're dropping five under two deep with the five-man look up front. Sorry, a four-man look, but they just bring Baker from the second level and drop out. It's a good job by Watson stepping up. Just slide. Don't take the hit. Slide, 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 right, if you can. They're punching out. They did a good job covering that stuff up. Right when you when you think maybe he could have gone to the middle, a little tricky. I don't mind him getting out and using his legs. Just protect yourself. Fourth quarter, couple throws. This is another example of that wildcat 
over the top orbit stuff that sells reverse because they've run, I think the Browns have run more reverse stuff than anybody else in the league this year. So again, watch what it does to Buddha. Holds those guys just a second, creates a nice run lane. Not very tricky up front. It's just it's just tight zone stuff. And then trying to hold down some guys on the backside. And then the third and five throw, right? This is the best throw from Watson of the day. I think I think this is the throw. No, okay, this is actually a precursor to that. So here's your look. Cardinals said we're not going to let Amari on the backside beat us. We're just going to bracket him, right? You outside, inside, just you know, keep him bottled up. Uh, over here, we're just running a sprint out. I'm not keen on sprint out, especially at the NFL level with those tight hash marks, right? Just condenses everything. I understand what the Browns are trying to do for Watson, his arm, getting him rolling to stuff to, to cut down on the distance. It's just, it's it's actually covered up pretty well. This ball could probably be thrown here. It's, you got to get it up and down pretty quick, but he doesn't feel comfortable. But watch Amari on the backside. I, I think this is where Amari's like, all right, man, I come, don't come over here and talk to the quarterback because this is open. They're not going to cover it. Right? So here's the tight view of that sprint out. I think this ball should be thrown here. Put it on the sideline like an us or nobody type throw. I don't know why his eyes are inside. I'm not sure what he's doing with that, but us or nobody ball up the sideline is kind of fine. Be careful. They're flipping it late. But this is what they come back to. You'll see Watson check the line of scrimmage. He's calling a man concept up front um, to get everybody lined up right, first of all. Then he's calling some man protection in order to keep everybody accounted for because he knew they are going to drop out. Watch, watch, watch here. Mari's like, I'm just going to run through it. Just run through it and throw it. And this is just a really phenomenal throw, you know, putting it in a bucket between two players. Good communication up front. They knew they're dropping out, really only bringing four or five at times. They do a great job of picking up this stunt right here. Good job here. Twist stunt. Dwan runs his man by. And that's a, that's a great throw fitting it between two players. This is well blocked. Good throw. And then the last one is just like, I don't know, some of you guys, old school football, maybe you did this in high school. It's T formation. It used to be a T formation team back in high school. We used to call this wing right to T. We used to call this 46 lead. It's just zone blocking up front, and you're just having two lead players. Usually you get a kick out, but the Browns are just kind of keeping it in line with their zone blocking. And if you can, if you can hook, seal, and bounce it, that's fine. If you find a crease to cut it up, that's fine too, right? That makes it 27 to 20 at that point. A little tight view of it, last play. Good stuff. Cut off that, get downhill. Kareem does a good job too of when he makes that cut, he hugs it. A lot of guys would try to get downhill too quick. He kind of makes that cut and stays on that 45 to, to give himself a good angle. So overall, really, really well done. Right. Good job by Cream. Cream's so good down near the goal line. That's an important part of his game. Big touchdown. Seal it. That's it for the offense. Let's switch over to the defense. Let's get John in here. That John to the stage. John, you should be able to hear me. I got a time. Look at that. I'm perfectly yep, gotcha. my offensive session there, man. What's up, buddy? Nice. How you doing, Jake? I'm okay. We're going to talk. Let me get up this uh, defensive film here and we're going to switch over. You got about 15 plays that you have me pull. So. Let's uh let's do it, man. Let me pull up your list too, so we can go through them. All right. So, oh, there it is. All right. So, all right. Here we go. We're gonna start with a nice little counterfeit. This is the first possession of the game. You tell me what you want, John. I will uh, rewind and highlight as you tell us, brother. Right. So we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about um Jim Schwartz uh, run philosophy here. We'll get into that through a couple of these clips right here. But I thought this is a great example of the linebackers working together to uh, fit this counter here. The thing to understand about this defense is um, generally he's playing single high, either cover one or cover three on um, run heavy or balance downs. Um, the goal behind this or the philosophy is you're playing what's called gapped out. So you're going to have one defender between the defensive line and the linebackers and the uh, strong safety sometimes to cover each gap. So when gaps move like this, when we get these two pullers, we have to adjust things. So just watch the um, watch the second level guys move on a string here. 
as they see the pull happen right there. So someone will make a pull call here when they see it happening. And again, everyone's sliding over their spot right there. Real nice um, thing from JOK here. Go back. Watch number six on the left side of the screen here. So typically the end is going to spill this or he's going to attack the first pull in such a way that it forces the ball to bounce outside. But if that doesn't happen, it's on the linebacker to correct his fit to make him right. So you can see like he's he's kind of moving like he's right. He's kind of getting back. He's dipping back inside on the spot right here. And we're going to see another great example of an even better one later on here. But everyone's downhill. You see Grant's coming all the way across to play the cutback now. He's going to take the uh, front side A gap because all the linebackers, they're working on like a like a chain. They're push, pulling all the way down to chase those gaps, get where they're at there. So this is a really nice fit. Really nice fit. Exactly how it should look. I'm pretty sure Walker's pointing to JOK to tell him to slide outside there too if you run that back one more time. Yep. So when I watched this one, I thought he was pointing at him. Yeah, yep. see right there. So he's telling them, pull, 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 get outside. So that's the communication piece that has to happen too to, uh, you know, to execute like this. Happens so fast too, man. Mm -hmm. um, Super. Okay. Uh, next one we have uh, split zone. A, so we'll I just show, thought this is a – Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll show right it from it. the wide field so everyone knows the result of the play. And then as we get into the tight, we'll break right. it down. Right. Yeah, so I thought this is just a cool concept with that little return motion there to so we'll bring him back. So, again, we're deep, we're playing gap doctor, so we have to adjust Ooh. for that motion, man, because he's now moving gap. So, we technically, we need to we need to fall back, or everyone needs to fall back to the next open gap towards him. But it's just it's so tough to do when they run that little motion like that and flip them around right there. Well timed, too, to get past the quarterback and then come back. Mm -hmm. Tell you, he wasn't expecting that was Miles because he gets caught. Yep. yep. Wow. Boom. And we're short right here again because we can't get the we can't get Walker over to that gap right there. He gets picked off before he uh, makes it over. And I'm I'm pretty sure this was their longest run of the day. They might have had two 11 yard runs. I don't remember. Well, they but, happened in the very beginning of the game. Yeah. That's what I do know. But yeah, this is definitely one of them right here. This is just a cool offensive concept, and it's it's tough to fit this one. That's just when you tip yeah, your especially cap when offense. you know that they're going to fall, they're going to bump, and then yeah, so they know they're, they're schemed up right here. I'm betting Baltimore's is. watching it. I'll tell you that much, John. Yeah, and they love the little mo like running the motion, the jet motion, and then adding blocking. Oh yeah, uh, they like to get creative off of it. This is Miles Garrett. I think he's really yeah. close to picking one of these off. I think he is too. Well, you watch him in the tight view. He's like, right. he like knows he's just so close. Yeah, it's just so silly. Like, why? Of all the people you're going to leave unblocked on this defense, I just don't get this from a, from a play caller's perspective. I don't really second guess, but because I know there's a lot we're not we're not privy to, but like of all the people you're going to leave unblocked on this field, it just I don't know. It's yeah, silly. it's like or you need times. to you need to cheat up as the quarterback to like be creative with getting it out there. I mean, they'll tell you what you can't mm -hmm. do. Clayton Tune is just throw it. Right. <laughs> right. You know, you need to either like sidearm it or like step up and like create that little window. Yeah, you got to be creative in some way. So that one's tricky. Right. All right. They have to, or they have to figure out some way to slow them down if they're not going to yeah. truly block them, block them. All right. Next one That's we nice have one. here looks like a Tampa 2 disguise. This yeah, is so fun. I, this is a neat, this is a really neat disguise right here. So we're making this look like we're playing single high. And so yeah. we're bailing out at the snap right here. So normally when you run a Tampa two, your Mike linebacker becomes your pull runner. So when you have two deep safeties, five underneath defenders, the two deep safeties, though, create a big hole in the middle of the field, particularly if you get outside releases from the number one receivers. Right. So you have to you have to get almost to the top of the numbers because you're responsible for vertical routes from both the receivers on each side. Right. One and two. So. They get to this um, by uh, just letting, rather than running the mic back, having them turn and just sprint downfield as fast as you can. We're going to let Thornhill just sit here at, what, about 13 yards mm -hmm. and just let everything come to him right here. So it's a, it's a cool concept from a uh, from a disguise perspective because um, I think Schwartz has played a decent amount of uh, Tampa 2 this season. I don't have the numbers um, like you do, but he does play it. Yeah, they'll, they'll sprinkle in two and six, mm -hmm. that quarter, quarter, half stuff. So. Right. Yeah, I like right. to see them be a little better at it. I like that variation. I certainly right. think that that's a nice, easier read than a guy hauling out of there in robot technique, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah, nice. this one's tough. I watched it live. I'm like, you might not want to have a tight end outside the tackle yeah. box trying to block a, 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 you know, you usually see this guy either 
like right down the middle of the tackle because you got a long way to go to try to exactly that and he's, and he's even in a one technique like he normally is. he's in a two eye here so it's even another foot or two you have to cover to get there All right i thought this one was a little baffling right here um what is interesting about this is this is um teams have been attacking you know the uh, the defense like this for the last couple of weeks we're in these little um we're in these little trap plays the double trap mm-hmm Triple trap again, but that's you know that's Short's philosophy is he wants the uh, defensive lineman in the backfield. They're just straight downhill. It's all it's all attack react. So this is how you get it. And Seattle knocked him for a couple. Uh, the Colts knocked him for a couple too. Yep. In fact, it'll, we looked at one when um, last last film session I did. Yep. I don't even remember who the team was at this point, but we saw Maybe it there the Titans? too. Titans? I don't even know. Maybe it might have been. That sounds right. It's been a minute. Um, right. Okay, so this is a little RPO action. Right. Not entirely sure why the quarterback's throwing this, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. I don't get it either. Yeah, it's it's locked down just by the uh, the defender's leverage and his alignment right there. I thought this was interesting, though, because I know um, Anthony Walker hit on this a little bit when he was uh, at his press conference late in the week. He talked about uh, defending our RPOs. He said Shorts was great at it, had lots of answers to it, and um, this is really the easiest way to do it, honestly. You just – because you're trying to – you're trying to put the zone defenders in conflict where they're part of the run fit, but they're also they have to honor the pass right there. So that's the run pass conflict. So easiest way to do it is just remove it. If you're in the slot and you're playing man coverage, you have nothing to do with the run unless it bounces outside. It's your it's your quickest, simplest, dirtiest answer. Yeah. And I don't know if the jump inside there. I I can't speak for Clayton Tune. That's not. It's not yeah. gonna. I want to ask you about this cover three. So obviously this is the interception, mm-hmm. largely driven by a quarterback miss. You know, this is this is open. Mm-hmm. It is. So, you know, we're dropping out. I mean, like, like my general question is, what is uh, what's going on with the coverage here? It's zone, but you got are they locking up McBride here? They just say, hey, is this a game plan thing? They want to take him away. Like he's it could running. Be a game. Yeah, it could be a game plan thing. Um, it could be. Um, I don't know. There's. Bad eyes by the zone defender. It's tough though because the two to that side. So our our toeback is the number two, and he's immediately out. So our mm-hmm. our weak hook right there because it's technically three by one. Normally he's going to match up the strong number three. There, so he's going to turn to the opposite side of the field like that, and he just happens yeah. to run right to them. Um, because if if number three were to run vertical here, then we have what are called take back rules. What that says is because you flooded the coverage strong, you have five defenders over. Um, three offensive threats, the weak hook defender now has to add himself if the, if they run a route that comes all the way back to him, like a bender or something like that. So generally he's actually going to just completely turn his body that way. He's going to have his butt face in the bottom of the screen. He's going to look for, you know, something coming back to him right there. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, uh, but again, I don't, you know, it could be tweaks in there. We're not privy again to what they're, um, you know, what they're installing and also that just the week to week stuff they're changing up due to, you know, game plan issues, matchups, um, just change ups you want to put in. Yeah, so it was an interesting think, wrinkle. With yeah, the, uh, yeah. I don't. Maybe they'll do that really, with Andrews a little this week. They only ran ten snaps a man, so maybe they're going to do some more hybrid stuff. Try to take away some stuff next week. We'll see. Yeah, well, and you know, also uh, Pete Smith mentioned this on uh, on the side on on uh, the Andrew Brown report, but he said, you know, maybe just we're practicing some zone this week because we're going to need to play a lot more of it next week because a lot of man against Lamar Jackson just isn't tenable. You know. Yeah, and they, they didn't play it. They didn't play much the first matchup, so I don't expect that to, to alter all too much. And ironically, this is a route that they hit off of a man look, and you mm-hmm. kind of get it here, right? It's the, it's the rail route with the yep. – I, I do not understand this flag. I mean – I didn't even get it either. Him. Yeah, I didn't I didn't understand it either. I, don't know I mean, he attempted official, to run a route. He just he ran yeah. a little pivot route. He can stop. And, and especially, is this guy outside. in the back? Like, this guy right yeah. here is calling this, so I don't know if he, like – his vision thought that that Marquise Brown ran into him here, or right. something. There's no other excuse for it. Yeah, it's a it's a soft call. It's definitely a soft call. But yeah. we've seen this every week now too, multiple times a week. I mean, yeah, they got to be ready to cover this man. Yeah. Teams are the, the teams are not. This is the only running back route that you're seeing. Like this mm-hmm. is <laughs> this is it. Yeah, we just well they know the books out. They know we're playing so much man, so we're getting their best man beaters. It's what Indeed. happens. Teams adjust. All right. So, so next one we have Dalvin Tomlinson in a little long on yeah. there. Just yeah, just a little, 
little technique right there. When you see it from the tie view, that long arm is super sexy. So he's the three really? technique right here. Yeah, just watch yeah. how he, he attacks. It's how you create space um, when you're being blocked. You can also use it as a pass rush move. Uh, Miles uses it a decent amount of times. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, you're just going to lock out that arm at full extension, get under him, stay low, and just drive him back. You can see, you can see his arms extended there, the right arm. He's got the outside arm free, get in on the tackle. And it's just a pile up there. Yeah, it's great stuff. So good technique. Indeed. Okay. Next one we have. Uh, so we're gonna look at. Uh, we're gonna have some cover three here. We're gonna look at a, a strong hook drop from Walker right here. Great read. So he starts on the uh, the hash toward the top of the screen right there. He's reading the. Um, and they almost got the pick on this one. He was close, but this is a great break. And this is more of a um, like a, a spot. I know people love this word, but it's it's more of a um, spot drop type coverage right here or a uh, they call it a vision zone he's just he's peeking at the wide receivers to see the number two's release the number two the number three uh release and then he's just melting with the quarterback and reading his eyes and when he feels like he's gonna throw he's just gonna break on it and he almost got him one there you can see yeah just reading it as soon as he commits he's out good stuff yeah it's ward almost there too good coverage all around um mm -hmm. All right, Taki Taki interception here, I think. I could be wrong. Uh, did we get – there was – maybe it's missed here. There was uh, an empty snap. Maybe just didn't uh, didn't make it over. That's okay. Or maybe my handwriting was so awful you uh, – which is also <laughs> very possible. Nah, you typed it up. So I may, I think I just added a play. JOK making a nice play here. This one you didn't have. I must have just somehow not cut this one out. Do we have I do yeah. like that they're being a bit more after the Colts game. They're doing a better job of if we're going to get a crash, we need a scrape, right? Mm -hmm. For Q pool. Right. That's what we're waiting yeah. on. So, yeah, I have to follow our zone or our, uh, our read rules, option rules. Yeah, no doubt. Second level, this is your empty check. Here you go. Okay. So, this is just a cool little, um, we'll go to the play first. This is a cool little empty check they have at the bottom of the screen. When you see when the number one receiver breaks in right there, the cornerback sort of slots off as soon as he sees that he's heading across the field, and they let the rat in the middle of the field right there take it over so he's not chasing it. And so he just dips out to play the high hole. Yeah, good thing he did. Uh -huh. I guess quarterback eyes. I mean, Thornhill's reading eyes, eyes, eyes over here. Yeah, right? so. yeah he's just he's melting with the, with the quarterback's front shoulder. Yep. He's taking them towards that side. There's of the your, field, so. there's your other 11 yard run, by the way. Oh yeah, you know what? That's right. That's it. Mess that up. Yeah, I like, I like that too. Answers taken right. away, and you know when you when you you get crazy and pass rush every now and again, these guys are going to get out. It's just going to happen. Especially in man, it's just going to yeah. happen to man covered sometimes. That's just the nature of the beast. Everyone's back is turned. They're looking at their uh, their man's hips, so they're out. They're out. They're out. That's right. Now we go. This is the talk interception, just kind of yep. melting underneath the corner. Right. So it's a, uh, yep, got a sale concept in OBS here. Vertical route from the outside, a medium type route from the inside or from the uh, second receiver, then a flat from the man. So one thing, he does a good job of reading and then, um, you know, syncing with that. But what I would say is generally when you make, um, when you see these sale concepts, the um, outside guys, the curl flat defenders are going to do something called sale technique. So with Generally, what their coach to do, and I don't want to say he should, should be doing it because, again, I'm not in the meeting room, but generally what their coach to do is as soon as they cross the number, as soon as they go through the number there, they should be turning their butt to the sideline, getting their eyes on the number two receiver, making mm -hmm. sure that you have, you know, you're, you're squeezing that throw and then you're breaking down to the on the flat. That's the idea behind it. You want to force the, the throw to the low man, right? But to do that, you want to, you don't want your hips to be square. Like as you go through the numbers there, you'd like to like right now, we want to get our butt to the sideline. We want to see both. So when we do have to break like that, we don't have to make that complete turn, right? We're already half cocked, mm -hmm. ready to get there. Yep. Good stuff. Good call. Yeah. Still a good, good right here. Still a great totally. play, obviously. Made it. But. I, I give credit to, I, th I I don't know if this is Isaiah McGuire right here, but that bull rush into the lap of yeah. the quarterback takes a little bit of zip out of that thing. Yeah, Not that definitely. Thornhill, I think Thornhill had it had it cut too, but you know, I think right. Juan, I think Juan thought he had one. You see him down there at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. he thought he mm -hmm. had one. All right. Um this correcting the fit here is what we right. have. So we'll watch so, this through and then watch the tight. 
Yeah, so this is going to be why, because this is another example of your – okay, so Jim Schwartz's philosophy, um, we talked about he's generally going to play single high. He's going to be what we call gapped out or one man, one gap on uh, on rundowns. The other thing behind it, too, and something to understand about the, uh, the way that D-line play and linebacker play is complementary is – that he wants his linebackers, like as far as NFL linebacker coaches and DCs go, he wants his linebackers to be super, super downhill. The reason he wants to do that is because he wants his defensive line to be able to penetrate and get in the backfield. Again, he wants them to attack, react. The reason he wants to say, John, like he wants to create a maze for the running back. Yeah, but but he wants, he wants them downhill because he wants to pull the double team off immediately. Yeah. So they yep. can get singled up and then they can work and get in right there. So it's really tough when it's like something like this happens. So right, we have a pull, right? So again, we want to spill it. It doesn't get spilled. So now it's on the linebacker to correct the uh, left defensive end right here. Because you can see he's he's shooting outside because his base rule is he's going to spill this. I'm the young block guy. I'm not. I'm now the contained player on the edge right there. But with the way he attacks the block, and that's a nice pop. Like as far as the contact, that's great. Look at his head go. Boom, straight back. Like that's a good stick right there, but it forces the ball carrier back inside. So now he's got to Walker has to dip back inside to play that inside gap right there. And all in all, you get a and this is maybe a four yard carry, whatever. They'll probably say too many yards, but you know, yeah. coach is a perfectionist. But it's just a it's a great example of and it's tough too because you're being on one hand, you're being asked to get downhill quickly, but on the other hand, when things don't go correct, it's on you to to correct them. So this is a cool concept from the middle of the field. Um, they did this several times against Seattle, at least not several, but at least two to three, I'd say. And it worked out well, too. We're looking at the uh, corners and the free safety here. We have this concept called nailing down. Um, I know there are other um, other names for it, but I think Nick Saban calls it nailing down. But the idea behind it is this. When we get a particular play action, when we get a post from one side of the field, and then we get that deep over from the other side of the field, Rather than asking the cornerback to squeeze the deep over route and chase it all the way across the field, he's going to re- he's going to exchange roles with the free safety. The free safety is going to nail it down, yes, and then that corner is now going to rotate to the middle of the field and help with the post that he's going to assume is coming the other way right here. Right, yeah, so you can see how it all kind of works together right there. So now instead of chasing that and because the zone defenders, you know, it's generally between the second level defenders and the uh, free safety right there, they just – they'd have to get too much depth to really uh, play this, right? And then they'd open up everything underneath, you know, from 15, 10 yards in. So you just have the uh, free safety, the cornerback, pass it off like this. Now, this is why, obviously, pressure is so so important and why they're pursuing it all the time. In all reality, if this is a skinny, which it is, I mean, this is a touchdown throw you can make. He's but it, ta- it takes a while to develop, and that's what – watch you know watch the interior pressure disrupt everything. I feel like the corner on the top of the screen got caught a bit peeking at the quarterback too instead of just hauling butt for the middle of the field. I agree. He was, he was definitely slow getting there. Yep. But that's, He's, again, you know, coverage will – pressure will make coverage look better all the time, right? Mm-hmm. You agree with that? Those Absolutely. guys make everything look better. And then this is a double slot pressure. This is, oh, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. brutal. This yeah, is this great. is nice. Yeah, this is really nice. So, you know, both coming off the edge here. We're playing uh, three deep, three under here, or fire zone coverage. Three deep defenders, three underneath defenders. We got two players in the middle dropping out here to play okay. the uh, – here we go, to make a seam drop, and then it's called the three receiver hook or the player, the underneath player that relates to the number three receiver. Grant Delp is going to punch himself for just missing on this mm-hmm, free mm-hmm. sack. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that thing was dialed up nice. Oh, yeah, I love that, man. Especially when there's those interior answers. So, uh, you, listen, there weren't many plays on defense, like forty something. So it wasn't right. many. They they dominated when they're out there. Like I said on, uh, I think I'm going to say it on tomorrow's pod when I recorded earlier. They are built to dominate bad offenses, man. If they if you can't block them up front, and you know you don't have some guys who can create havoc and you don't have a scheme that can create some confusion if you just try to play these guys straight up john it's not a good it's not a good thing man no they're, it isn't especially, they're tough. especially when the man coverage is on too yeah they, no they're, they're to tough so you better be creative the ravens scheme stuff though creates as much a challenge as we will see so um you know excited to break that one down and hopefully we'll get some of john's time after that one in the next week, Monday, it's the biggest, one of the bigger games the Browns have had in a regular season 
in a, in a while. There's a lot riding on this. If you want to have any shot at the division, you have to go to Baltimore and win. You know, you can't let them get to seven and two while you're sitting at five and four, right? So got to get it. Huge game. It's going to be a lot of nuance when we break it down, and that's why we bring John in. So we appreciate you, buddy. Of course. Thank you for having me. All right, guys. We're out of here. Thanks for stopping by Chalk Talk. Good hour and 20 minutes of film conversation, all the good stuff. If you ever have questions, hit us up at the OBR, ask the insiders. We'll answer those questions for you. Otherwise, appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Really looking forward to doing this, covering the Baltimore game, because it's going to be a big one. So we'll check in with you in a week. Check out tomorrow's OBR Film Breakdown podcast where you get your comprehensive review, all that fun stuff, the data, the player performance, all the goods. Check it out. Thanks to John for stopping by, and thanks to you guys for being here. Have a great night. Go Browns.